or my child can't get the medications that they need. Or I can just take the mark of the beast and be completely healed. What are most people going to do? Most people are going to take the mark of the beast. Hey fam, it's Rachel. Today on Crack Your Bible, we are going to be talking about how most people who call themselves Christians are going straight into the lake of fire. Now, before we get started, make sure you hit subscribe with the bell with the parentheses so you're notified of a new gospel message because, of course, Satan and YouTube and Google, they're one and the same, but they do not want you to know the gospel and they will never notify you of a new gospel message unless you hit subscribe with the bell with the parentheses. So let's get it started. But before we do, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. I have received messages from people who do not speak English as a first language and they said that they are hoping that somebody is willing to do the translations for the subtitles for Crack Your Bible videos. If you go to my website, rachelandstevens.com and you go to the support button, I do have a step-by-step -step in how you can help the kingdom of God by putting some translations up there for our Christian brothers and sisters overseas who don't speak English as a first language because I knew, I do know that I speak fast and I also use a lot of American slang, specifically age dependent slang. It's for my, you know, millennial Gen X type audience. But anyway, if any of you guys do speak another language, if you would please go to my website and click support, you can see how you can add in other subtitles in your language. It's free. Google auto translates the subtitles. All you have to do is double check their work to make sure it's correct. And then you just press publish and we're good to go. People will see uh, the subtitles in their own language. So if you guys could help us out and the body of Christ out. That is a great way to start racking up some crowns in heaven by helping share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others, even if you don't have your own channel. So if you guys could do that, I would really appreciate it. But let's just jump right up into today's topic because I am grieved. I am seriously, <sighs> I'm, I'm getting upset. And it's not an angry upset. Well, it is an angry upset, but I'm also sad upset because I just see the writing on the wall, like in Daniel where the hand appears and you see the writing on the wall. Most people who call themselves Christians are going to go to hell. And it's frustrating because I see that a lot of it is because of the teachings that are coming out of the U.S. churches. And it's not just that because the U.S. churches wouldn't be able to preach this stuff if people didn't want to hear it. Because all of this self-idolatry comes out of man's own flesh. And we've been talking about this. And this is going to go right into what we're going to do when we get right back into Genesis. Where we go chronologically through the Bible, verse by verse. The last time we talked about Genesis was right before the summer started. And we were talking about how Abram disobeyed God and somebody in my comment section made a comment about, you know, I've never heard God speak to me. And that's what started off this whole summer series of prayer. That's how we got into the Jezebel stuff. And now we really need to talk about this because this is going to be specifically uh, be dealt with when we talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. Who is your faith put into? Who do you put your faith in? What is your foundation put on. Because what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of uh, emails from people saying, I, I'm not receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're having trouble. And it just came to me. The reason why so many people are having trouble is because they don't believe in Jesus. They're not actual believers in Jesus Christ. And you cannot have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't fall on people who don't believe in Jesus. And most people they say, oh, you know, Jesus exists. Well, you know, even the demons believe that Jesus exists. That's just a statement of fact. Jesus is God. Okay, that's a statement of fact. That's not an opinion. That's not saying, well, I, I believe this. It's just a fact. The, the sun is hot. That is a fact. That's not, oh, I believe the sun is hot. No, that is a fact. And likewise, Jesus is God is a fact. It's not a statement of, oh, well, I believe this. So many people will say, oh yeah, Jesus is God, but they haven't actually put their faith in Jesus. They don't believe in him as their God. They don't put their trust and their hope in him. 
It says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe that God has raised him up from the dead, we're saved. If we confess with our mouth, believe in our heart, then we're saved. These are two important steps. And uh, I know that Mike Winger today just did a great video about how believing in Jesus is not a work because that comes straight out of Calvinism and he he's already covered it. So I'm not going to do a video on it. I will link it down below in the description box and right up here. But so often people, they don't even have the first thing that you need to be saved, belief in Jesus. And they haven't accepted, they haven't put their faith and trust in him. And I'm just seeing throughout my comment section as people come and join this family on this channel that there are so many people that they have not put their faith in Jesus Christ. And then they wonder why they're not bearing the fruits that are in line with somebody who has the Holy Spirit because you don't have the Holy Spirit. That's why you're not bearing the fruit. That is why you're you're having some of these struggles. This is why you're not able to speak in new tongues because we've already talked about if anybody says not all speak in new tongues, if you have not watched all 12 videos, don't even comment. Don't even do, I'm telling you, it is fool and folly to answer a matter before you have heard it. Proverbs 18:13. So, you know, People are having these problems and they're having these troubles and, you know, the demons aren't leaving them alone when they tell them to leave because they don't have the Holy Spirit inside of them and they don't have the Holy Spirit inside of them because they haven't made Jesus the Lord of their life. That is the first thing that you have to have before you can start bearing fruit of repentance. You need to repent, you need to believe in your heart, and you need to confess with your mouth and then you are saved. And I'm seeing so often that people are putting their faith in, you know, oh, flat earth. I'm going to scream if I hear this Babylonian paganism one more time. Flat earth comes out of Babylonian paganism and it is promoted by Islam. It has nothing to do with the Bible. It has absolutely nothing to do with the Bible. And we see so many people, you know, there's a lot of simple minded people out there and there's nothing wrong with being simple minded. But at the same time, there are teachers that prey upon simple-minded people. And the Bible has poetry. It has, uh, you know, genealogy lists. It has legal rules in there. Some of it is a narrative. And you are going to have figures of speech in there. And just like I speak with figures of speech and slang, the Bible does as well. So you'll see, oh, the four corners of the earth or the fixed earth. And it's just like, they'll prey upon people with this stuff. And then they'll say, oh, well, I've brought so many people to Jesus because of flat earth. Nonsense. Absolutely not. No, you haven't. Because if your faith is not built upon Jesus, it's actually built on flat earth, then your foundation is trash. It's like building a house on a pile of trash. We talked about this in my video about is your faith built on sand, the man who built his house on sand. This is a Bible metaphor that we already covered. Or is it built on the rock? And your foundation has to be built on the rock. And I harp on flat earth because the flat earthers are like a cult. Yeah, every video I'm getting, what do you think about flat earth? What, are, blah, blah, blah. what about Jesus? How come none of y'all are in my comments talking about Jesus, but all of y'all can tell me a 17 hour video that I need to watch proving flat earth. The gospel that we're supposed to be preaching is Jesus. It's not the health, wealth, prosperity. It's not Jehovah's Witnesses where, oh, we, we don't, you know, all days are the same. It's not the Seventh Day Adventist nonsense about, oh, well, the Sabbath day is, that's, you know, if you worship on Sunday, that's the mark of the beast. Just all of these garbage cults. I'm tired of it. The same with Mormonism. Oh, there, it's not about Jesus. It's, oh, we're part of the priesthood, even though by Joseph Smith's own ripped off garbage book, he wouldn't even have the priesthood by his own book. Because that's how poor of a writer he was. But I'm seeing Christians, they're not taking it seriously when it comes to the end time signs. And they think that, oh, well, you know, Jesus isn't going to have me go through the tribulation. And, you know, I'm never going to have to take a stand. And I'm here to tell you, if you think 
You're never going to have to take a stand for Jesus. You are going to take the mark of the beast. I can guarantee you, you will take the mark of the beast. If that is how you think, if you think, oh, thank God, I'm never going to have to make a stand where I have to choose between my life and my faith, you, number one, pre-trip rapture is garbage. And you guys can all watch the Sheila Zelensky pre-trib debate that has already been ended down below because you cannot deny that Jesus promised us in this life, you will have tribulations. He promises us tribulation and the tribulation is not the same as God's pouring out of wrath. And, you know, so often here in the United States, probably in the last not even 100 years, this pre-trib rapture doctrine that took off in the 1830s, this is not something that the church fathers believe. This came out of the 1830s in the United States. It has deceived people into thinking, I am here to have a great life. God just wants to bless me. No bad things are going to happen to me. And I'm here to say... You can say Jesus is God all you want, but if you are not bearing the fruits of somebody who actually is a follower of Christ, who has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, you're not saved. You don't have Jesus Christ in your life. You are not his adopted child. Everybody always mistakenly says, oh, we're all God's children. Wrong. We're all God's creation, but it is not until you accept Jesus Christ that you are God's child. Yay. You're simply a creation that belongs to Satan until you decide to listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I just want to reiterate that we don't do good works to be saved. We do good works because we're saved. These signs will accompany those who believe. Cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, etc., etc., etc. They'll pick up... Yeah, whatever. These signs will accompany those who believe. You have to bear the fruit with accordance to repentance. So if you're not bearing the fruit, it is showing that you're not actually saved. You don't bear the fruit to become saved. You bear the fruit because you're saved. And if you're not bearing the fruit, that's how you know. That's how everybody can figure out that you're not actually saved. Because you can say all you want. Oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. But if you're not bearing the fruit. Does a thorn bush grow figs? Likewise, does a fig tree grow thorns? No. And I just see so many people, especially in my video about you'll take the mark of the beast most likely because so many people, they want to be a friend of the world. They don't want to have to take a stand for their faith. So many people are, they're not trusting in Jesus Christ. They're trusting in their preps. Oh, oh, I'm just going to get a bunch of, uh, uh, MREs and I'm going to go live out in the woods and oh, I'm going to have a Christian community and I'm going to hunt. Go look at Venezuela right now, today. People don't have food. People don't have toilet paper. They're eating cats and dogs down there. They're starving to death. You think if hunting was a viable option, those people wouldn't be out hunting? That they wouldn't be, you know, creating communities where they can just barter and create all their own stuff? We can already see in other places in the world you, this prepper fantasy where everybody's bought into like, oh, it's going to be like The Walking Dead and we're just going to have armies of people that we just all coexist together. That is a fantasy. This is Hollywood. And you all need to get really serious about your faith. You need to get deadly serious about do you believe in Jesus? Are you ready to take up your cross? Or is this just a bunch of time wasting that you're doing? Because you're going to have to make a stand. And we see the writings on the wall that the end times are coming soon. And the end times, you know, when the Antichrist system sets up where nobody can buy or sell, what do you think that means? Do you think 
John, who lived in an agrarian society, was, oh, well, everybody can just farm and barter. No, he already lived in that kind of society. It's going to be like the Hunger Games, where there's like a dome that, you know, can pinpoint where you are. We already have, you know, sound weapons. We have all sorts of like heat-seeking missiles and drones and all sorts of stuff that you cannot hide from. You think a Nephilim can't figure out where you are underground, where all flesh was going to become corrupted like it was in the days of Noah. Jesus says, so in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of man. And it's not just about the eating and drinking because we've already talked about all the garbage that was going on in Noah's day. People will not be able to die when they take the mark of the beast. They'll long for death, but they will not be able to, to die. Their DNA is going to be transformed. And I just want you to know, you need to get deadly serious about your faith. You need to get deadly serious about repentance. And you need to get deadly serious about deciding, am I going to take up my cross and follow Jesus or not? Because it's, again, like I said, it's going to be like the Hunger Games where you're on your own. You are going to be running for fear of your life. And there is no medication. So all of these people that are, oh, I'm going to prep. And, you know, right now they're on disability. They don't have a job. They have to take insulin. Maybe they're on dialysis. You will die. You will not be able to get dialysis. You will not be able to get your medication. You will not be able to use your pacemaker anymore. Do you think that they can't take you out when you have all of these things on you? They will literally kill you. You will die. So you need to decide, what are you going to do? When the beast system tells you, hey, if you do this, you're going to be totally healed. You're not going to need all of these things. You're not going to need a pacemaker. You're not going to need dialysis. You know, you're going to get limbs that are regrown. Are you going to take the beast? Are you going to take the mark of the beast then? Because I guarantee you most people will. Most people are going to say, die because I cannot get you know, my insulin, because I can't get my Coumadin, because I can't get uh, maybe my lithium or any of my medications that I need, or my child can't get the medications that they need, or I can just take the Mark of the Beast and be completely healed. What are most people going to do? Most people are going to take the Mark of the Beast. Are you going to take the Mark of the Beast? Because so often we talk about taking up our cross, but again, so many people... When I say don't celebrate Christmas, all of a sudden, oh, unsubscribe. Am I your enemy because I tell you the truth? That's in Galatians. You know, people heard things from Jesus. They heard things from the apostles and they followed Jesus no more because these things are hard to swallow. It's hard to swallow that you're going to have to take up your cross and follow Jesus, that you're going to have to die for Jesus. You know, I don't know where people are thinking like, oh, God's going to take all of his people out before the tribulation, even though it says, you know, he hasn't appointed us to wrath. There's different periods and wrath is not tribulation. Jesus has never taken us out of tribulation, but he is always 100% guaranteed that he is going to be with us to the end. I know who goes before me. It's God. God is the one. The battle is his. It's not mine. It's God's battle. But am I willing to walk in faith and follow him? Am I willing to put my faith out there on the line? Am I willing to risk my life for Jesus? Because you're not going to prep your way out of the Antichrist beast, beast system. You have to be willing to be beheaded for Jesus. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to let your kids be tortured rather than take the mark of the beast? If not, anybody who loves their mothers, their fathers, their sons, their daughters more than Jesus, they're not worthy of him. And you will not spend eternity with him because there are no traitors in God's kingdom. He is a king with a kingdom and he's coming back. And if you think that you're going to you know, oh, partially follow him, oh, lukewarm follow him when the days are good, but when it's bad, eh, I don't want any part of that. You're not getting into his kingdom. He knows what's up. He knows how you are. He knows your, your inmost thoughts. The, David, the psalmist says, you know, no matter where I go, to, even down to the depths of Sheol, you're with me. You know. 
So don't think that you're going to play God. Oh, oh, he's not going to know that. Oh, I really don't believe in any of this. He knows. He is the one that searches the minds and hearts of everybody. And I want you to get serious about this because, again, Jesus has never taken his people out of tribulation, but he has always been right there beside them. We see not only from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, these people all died for their faith and they were murdered by so-called religious people. And I want you to get ready for this. Everywhere Jesus went, people tried to kill him. Everywhere that the apostles went, people tried to kill him. All of the apostles, except for John, were martyred. They were put to death for their faith. Do you have that kind of faith? Are you willing to do these things? Because you're going to have to. You are going to have to put yourself out on the line. Because God is not going to take you out of tribulation. He's, he's not going to do that. We see Daniel. Did he not go into the lion's den? No, but God was with him to the end. Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael. You probably know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They went into the fiery furnace rather than bow down before Nebuchadnezzar's golden image. Did they somehow not go into the fiery furnace? They went in, but when the guards looked in, they saw a fourth person. It was Jesus Christ in that fiery furnace with them. Even unto death, they held on to their faith. No, I'm not going to bow down. No, I'm not going to do this. Most Christians today would be, God knows my heart. That's not what it means to me. I'll just keep bowing down. You're going to die if you do that. And it, not just physically, you are going to spiritually die. Your body will be destroyed, but your spirit will eternally burn in the lake of fire. So I'm here to tell you today, Abel died for his faith. We see the apostles, they died for their faith. John the Baptist was beheaded for his faith. They, they murdered Jesus. They falsely accused him, put him up on a cross, and they crucified him. We have to be willing to take up our cross just like Jesus did. And this is not something that is just like flippant. This isn't something easy because remember on the cross, Jesus quotes Psalm 22, which describes his entire death. A lie, a lie, la ma sabathani, which means my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it tells about how uh, his his heart is like wax and his bones are all out of joint and all this other stuff. Are you willing to deal with that? Because brothers and sisters in Christ overseas, their children are put to death. They're sold into slavery. They're decapitated and tortured for their faith. But somehow in the West, we think, oh, that's never going to happen to me. If God's not taking them out of the tribulation that is happening today, what makes you think that they're going to miss the tribulation that comes during the beast system? If God didn't take Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael out of the fiery furnace, what makes you think that you're not going to go into a fiery furnace? If John the Baptist was beheaded, if all the apostles were put to the sword, what makes you think that you won't? Elisha laid naked on his side for three years and was fed by ravens. He was chased by Jezebel and Ahab, so much so that he's like, God, please just take me up into heaven. And finally, God relented and took him up in a chariot of fire. But for years, he dealt with persecution, prophets that were hidden in caves. You know, their fellow prophets were put to the sword by Jezebel. We've already talked about that in our Jezebel series recently. We see so many prophets over and over and over. They were put to death. Naboth, he was stoned to death on false accusations. Did God take him out of that tribulation? No, but he went to the grave and he died for his faith. Are you willing to do that? Because if you're not, I'm here to tell you, you need to get right with God real quick. It doesn't matter how often you go to church. It doesn't matter if you've said the sinner's prayer. If you are not bearing the fruit of in accordance with repentance, if you don't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, you're not saved. Today, I want you to make a decision. Are you going to follow Jesus? Are you going to say, Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. I repent of the things that I have done. I believe that God has raised you from the dead. Or are you going to be like, eh, I'm good. I'm a good person. God knows my heart, even though it says that the heart is deceptively wicked above all things. And, oh, well, I've never killed anybody, even though it says if you've been angry with your brother, it's no different than murdering him in your heart. 
oh, I've never committed adultery, but, you know, Jesus says that if you even look at a woman with the intent to covet her, you've already committed adultery. Oh, I've never practiced witchcraft, even though it says that the sin of rebellion is like witchcraft and that, you know, this is no different than idolatry. It's no different than witchcraft. It's no different than murder. It's no different than idolatry. If you've said one lie, you're a liar. If you've stolen one thing, you're a thief. I mean, people go down the list and they've broken multiple commands and yet they still say, oh, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. You're not a good person. We're all sinful and we all need a savior. And if you are putting your trust in anything but Jesus Christ, I'm here to tell you, you are not saved. You are not going to spend eternity with Jesus Christ if your trust is put into anything other than Jesus Christ finished work on the cross. And I want you to make a decision today because you don't know how much time you have. You could die before this video is over. You don't know. And there is no coming back from rejecting the prompting of the Holy Spirit. There is no atonement for sin after you've already died. This is what so many people cannot get through their heads on my video about once saved, always saved. If you reject the prompting of the Holy Spirit and then you die, you cannot, there's no coming back from that. You are no longer saved. And so many people, you know, they're just like the seed in Jesus's parable of the seed that fell on rocky ground. First, they received the good news with joy. It says that they've received it with joy. But then when persecution comes, they wither away because they have no root. Christians, you can lose your salvation. At one time, you believed, but now you, you, you no longer believe. And I'm here to say... You need to stop rejecting the prompting of the Holy Spirit and you need to get right with God because once you die, there is no coming back from that. And if you think that you are going to take the mark of the beast because, oh, I have kids or, oh, I need medication and God's going to understand, I want you to know that anyone who tries to save their life will lose it and anyone who loses their life for God will save it. And that is speaking spiritually. You will lose your life if you try to do anything to say, save your life here on this earth. Don't be a sellout. I want you to get serious about repentance. I want you to have a serious, frank conversation with yourself about where is your faith. Maybe as a kid you really believe, but then all of a sudden, you know, as an adult, maybe you backslid and you're like, man, this doesn't make sense. This is all garbage. And you know, you really don't believe this stuff anymore. I want you to listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is trying to bring you back into the fold. Don't reject the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He is the one who goes into battle before us. And I want you to stand strong to the end because it is the one who endures to the end that is saved. Stop trying to put your trust in anything but Jesus Christ. It's not Jesus and, it's Jesus period. That's it. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I hope you will like, subscribe, and share, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.